Howdy y'all, Fast Forest 289, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna be working on my 1968 Ford Fairlane 500 Fastback. And we're gonna be changing this old, rusty, painted, dented, pitted, bent up bumper on this car and putting a nice new shiny chrome one on here. So let's get, uh, I'm gonna get, show you how to take it off and we're gonna clean the brackets up and all that and put it back together. So let's jump into it and uh, see what we got. Alrighty, so if we're looking at the back of the car, to take this bumper off, we're gonna have to go inside the trunk here. So if we look right here, there's two bolts. This one's missing on this side, but we got a bolt here. And then we come along to the other side, same thing over here. And again, I don't know why, but there's a bolt missing. I'm gonna take care of them. I'm gonna put a bolt back when I put this back together. We gotta remove those bolts. Usually, like I say, four. And then the bumper will come off, but also we got to come in here and disconnect our, our light switch too. There's a wire, there's a wire right here and a, a rubber grommet. We gotta try to fish that through there. Okay, so once you unplug the wire and you get this grommet, I had to, I had to kind of trim mine because it's so hard and brittle. Uh, it's just the way, it's nature of the beast when you deal with these old rubber grommets. But you wanna push that through the hole here. And that's for the license plate light. All right, so also if you look underneath the car, you can see you have a bolt here. And there's supposed to be a bolt there too that's also missing. This bumper's obviously been off this car before. Somebody didn't put it back right. But you have this on both the passenger and driver's side. It's the same exact way over here. One bolt there. And there's supposed to be one there. Pull all, what's that? Three, four, six, eight bolts out. And then the bumper will come off. And then also in my case, I have air shock, so I gotta disconnect this from that bumper too, so. Okay, so now, obviously, uh, unless you have your setup like this, you don't have to worry about this step, but I have air shock, so I'm gonna pull this nut here off so I can get this fitting at the back. All right, and I'm sure it's self-explanatory. You obviously want to do the bottom bolts first and then the top ones, that way the bumper don't fall on you. So we're gonna go ahead and get, and you may want some help with this. Uh, I'm doing this by myself, but if you have some help, it'll definitely be easier. Best thing to do is kind of take one bolt out and then you can kind of help support it while you take the other one out with one hand, so. Alrighty guys, well the bumper's off. And uh, I tell you what, it's always cool when you get to take your car apart and really see what's underneath. This car, see this car has rust, which is not uncommon for these cars. These cars always have rust, it's just, the nature of the business. They always rust in the floors, the cow vents, and in sections like this. This is things that I'll take care of. I'm gonna clean all this up and put a coat of paint on it to stop the rust for now. And when I get the body work done in the future, I will, uh, you know, come back and actually fix all this. And that's pretty cool. You can see that paint's still shiny. That's the original paint writer. That's the original color of the car. This car came originally blue. I'm gonna paint it back blue eventually, but look at this, even still shiny. That's cool pretty blue and uh see ya uh definitely not perfect but uh see it's got some rust it's always in those corners right there right there there and there in the exact same spot which actually it almost looks like no never mind i was gonna say it actually might be a factory hole that just rusted out but i don't think so but yeah i don't think so but anyway no big deal. We'll clean all this up and get it painted and then uh, we'll be ready to go. Okay, so now we can pull these brackets off. I went ahead and pulled this one off to get my uh, air shock line out and pulled this one loose to get that loose because these are individual brackets here. 
This is just a support bracket basically, and this is actually what bolts the bumper to the car. These bolts are a three quarter, all four. You got four, two here, two here, four on each side. We're gonna have to, the new bumper comes with new bolts to mount this, but we gotta reuse these obviously. So we gotta take these off and we clean these up, paint them and then put them on the new bumper. And I believe they give you new washers as well, but uh, if not, I'll get some new ones. There we go. And it's off. They've definitely seen uh, better days, but uh, they're actually not in that bad of shape either. Yeah, they got a little bit of rust, but I'll clean them up really good and then we'll be on our way. Okay, so I went ahead and took the license plate holder off. I forgot to shoot it, but they're a, a 7 16 nuts on the back side. You just pull them off and the license plate holder comes off. I also got to pull this light here out, and that's a 5 16 for those. So I'm just going to use my ratchet and socket here and pull these off. I mean, that's out of the way. And it's, I'm gonna clean all this up, give this a coat of paint and do whatever I need to do before I put it back together. And now the bumper is bare. We can take this bumper and throw it away now. We don't need it anymore. We don't need the bolts, don't need none of the stuff for it cause it all comes new. That's all the hardware you have to take out of it. So that's trash. And now we get to cleaning everything up and painting what we need to and getting ready to install the new bumper. Alrighty, so we got all this, I got all this sanded down now, cleaned up really good. Uh, there is still definitely some rust here, obviously, but I'm not going to worry about this. I'm not cutting this out right now. When I get ready to do the body work on the car, I'm going to strip the whole car apart and then I'll cut that out and fix it then. But it is clean for the best I could clean it for now. And uh, a lot better than it was. So I'm going to put a good coat of primer on here and then some paint to seal the rust, stop it from rusting, keep it from rusting anymore, and then it'll be ready to put the new bumper on. Up here, you got these runs where this car was not painted very good. This, this paint is, is crappy, to say the least, but I was going to take this off right here and paint from here down black because I don't have any yellow paint. But instead, because you will see this sticking above the bumper, you won't see this below the bumper. So I'm just going to tape it off and paint from here down because... You know, I don't have any yellow paint. I don't want all this black. So I'm gonna do that. For the gas cap, I cleaned off most of the paint and these are supposed to be a bare metal. And this is actually galvanized from the factory, but I took some of the galvanizing off. So now it'll just rust. I'm gonna end up painting this black with the rest of it. So then it will not rust, essentially. But yeah, that uh, it's all cleaned up. All the heavy rust is done, it's smooth. I cleaned this with some isopropylic uh, alcohol you want something to clean this really good to get any grease dirt and foreign materials out of here before you paint so we got it all cleaned up it's looking good i'm gonna give it a coat of paint and then we'll come back after it dries to install the bumper all righty so we got this all cleaned up and painted now and like I said, don't pay attention to this crap. This is, you know, yeah, the bumper covers up to about about here or so, so you won't see it. But at least now where I primered it and I decided not to paint it, just primer because I don't drive the car outside or nothing. So this will be just fine until I get ready to do some body work on it. But looks a lot better. Alrighty guys, well I got the license plate holder all cleaned up. Uh, let me tell you, it took me a little bit of time to get this thing right, but uh, it looks good. I took a wire brush on my drill there and just went over, got all the paint off. It had like three layers of paint on here over the years and had to straighten out a few things like this handle to open the, to open, to fold it down. It was bent up. So I bent it back down, clean it up. Also, I never even paid attention to it before this thing was covering so much crud, but there's a little tab down here at the bottom. Your license plate sits in and then screws in at the top there. All this time, I never even knew it was there. I came across that and I had to bend it back out. It was bent flat. I had to bend it out. But uh, looks good. I got it pretty clean. Now I'm gonna throw it on the hook over here. I wiped it down with some alcohol. That's why I'm wearing gloves. Throw it over here on the hook. 
and then put some primer on it and some paint and that thing will be looking good all right so i'm gonna be putting some black primer on this and i am gonna paint this for the parts you won't see like the brackets and underneath the bumper i just did primer because you won't see it but this is how you will see it technically when you fold it down all i just want it to be nice and neat i'm gonna paint primer and paint it and in case you're wondering this is the primer i'm using it's just a general purpose primer nothing special a uh you see right there a black primer it's the part number if you want it i'm not exactly sure where this came from i think maybe walmart i don't even know to be honest but but uh, it's a good primer it seems to work pretty good let's get this thing uh coated all right now we got some nice primer thrown on this thing it looks good now it's time to throw some paint on this thing all righty so this is the finished pro product we got here uh this is the license plate holder i got it painted up i put some new actually it's the same ones i just cleaned the paint off of them the uh the screw inserts for the license plate so we can go ahead and put the license plate on here now and get it bolted in because i can install this after the license plate is on there so it just slides right on slides in that little clip that i was telling you about There we go. And now you can get to the lever real good. And that looks good. Okay, so now we got this. This is the license plate light. You see it's got overspray of paint on there and everything. I'm gonna take this apart. We're gonna clean this up and get this painted as well. That way, because I want all this to go back together and be like new. You know, while you're in here, you may as well take the time to clean everything up. Makes it better that way. desk is tore but ain't no big deal so to be careful not to tear it anymore and yeah now i may in uh, upgrade this to an led light eventually i don't have one right now though so it's got to just kind of stay what it is for now okay so how we're gonna have to do this is i'm gonna have to just kind of tape up the spots that don't need to be painted because you don't want to paint in here this is supposed to be a silvery to reflect light to make it brighter and it still looks pretty good. It's just rusty around here. So I'm gonna have to just tape up. There is it ain't supposed to be painted. This is actually real glass, which is really cool. So we just need to get the paint and everything off of here. So uh, it'll be clean again, but that's not that big of a deal. And then like I said, the gasket, of course, I have to be careful with that. And then this is the retainer and I'm gonna clean this up, put some paint on that. Yep. here's another reason why you should come in here and work on your stuff because you never know what you might find what this appears to be to me is that somebody couldn't get this grommet out of here you know they didn't want to work at it to get it out of the hole so instead they cut the wire to remove the bumper in the past and then halfway spliced it together which obviously wasn't very good so i'm gonna fix that while i'm in here too okay so i went ahead and cleaned this up with the wire wheel uh, i'm gonna tape this up i actually it's a good thing i just looked at this because i forgot to tape this up i forgot to tape up in here so i'm gonna tape that up real quick and then we'll get back to it on painting this i clean this up as well i'm gonna paint the inside of that then flip whatever paint the outside and then this right here will be ready to go also fixed i took the paint off of these this uh cord that was on here and cut the end off so i can strip it and actually put a, an end on after i paint everything all right, so there we go. I got it all taped up. It ain't got to be pretty. I just wanted to get the area where the bulb was going to sit. So now we can paint this and this will be good to go. And then we'll come back after it dries. <clears throat> okay, so now we got this all straightened out, cleaned up, painted and whatnot. We can go and start putting this back together and get it ready to go. A little tip, in case you don't know, anytime you're loading bulbs, if you don't want to have to push on the glass and turn it, you can always take the wire and pull back on a little bit and that'll pull the the uh, contact in the bottom down and then you can just push the bulb in and turn it easy like i just did so there's that easy peasy we'll go ahead and get this put back and this gasket goes one way oh uh, to be honest with you it looks like this is actually something somebody made i don't even think this is original to be honest with you 
But either way, it works, so I'm going to keep it in here. And we can fix this wire here. I actually don't have a piece of heat shrink that's the right size, so but that'll work. And I can go back on the bumper when we get ready. All right, so here's my brand new bumper. We're going to get the license plate light and everything bolted down into it now. And it goes this way with the cord pointing in that direction toward the driver's side when you install it. Okay, so one thing we need to do before I put the last plate cover on here is I gotta drill a hole for my air shocks. Since I have air shocks on the car, I don't know that I'm going to keep it on the car forever, but you know, I may, I may not. I don't know where I'll go in the future, but drilling a hole in here ain't going to hurt anything. You won't see it because it'll be hid behind the license plate cover. So I'm going to drill that now before I get that in the way. Take a piece of tape and put it on here. The tape keeps from the, keeps the chrome from chipping whenever I punch it and drill it. I know about where it needs to be, so. Put that there, and then I just gotta measure out my hole here. All right, so I went ahead and got my mark marked out where I need to punch it. I'll go ahead and punch it now. All right, now I pull the tape off. It'll be a nice clean cut. See, no chipping of the chrome. All right, so we got everything installed. Now we got to install our brackets onto the back of the bumper. They give you these this, in the bolt kit. They come with these washers, which go back here on these. They also give you these shims that go between the bracket and the bumper. Then they give you two different styles of bolts. They give you six stainless steel bolts to go where the chrome is so then it doesn't rust. And then they give you two just regular bolts that go on the bottom here underneath the car where you won't see it. So, you know, I just like the factory had it. They also give you these lock nuts. So it comes as a complete kit when you buy the bumper kit. Now note that uh, the bumper and the bolt kit is separate. You have to, I had to buy them individually. I am going to buy new brackets. Uh, these are rusted, pitted, bent kind of, but they will work for now. I'm going to go ahead and use them. And then I'll order the brackets later, probably when I get ready to repaint the car later on down the road. Because I got other things back there I got to fix anyway. So it'll be a good time to order them and, and take care of it then. I went ahead and tapped these holes. I'm going to get new bolts for them. But we can go ahead and install them. <clears throat> the way these brackets work, 
is you have this bracket that sits here, obviously. And then this bracket here goes in the corner, like so. But it overlaps this bracket. But also, if you notice, there's a tab right here on this bracket that actually slides up into this hole. So when you put this all together, it's got to go like that. And it kind of locks together. That way when you bolt it up, it's all like one unit, basically. So uh, keep that in mind when you are installing this. And these shims go, from what I can tell, they give you eight in the kit, but you really only need six because you can't get one under here. If you notice the way these bolts are made, this is that plain, simple bolt that's galvanized or whatever. If you look at the head of it, it is not cut out for this washer to sit down on it flat and evenly. You know, so it's not going to sit like it's supposed to really. But if you look at the stainless steel bolts or chrome, whatever they are, you see how they're actually are cut out on the corners. And that is to allow for this washer to sit down flat like it's supposed to. So a washer does not go, or a, you know, a shim or whatever you want to call it, does not go under here, but it goes under here and under the rest of the mounting points. So for that, you're only going to need six of them, but like I said, to give you eight in the kit. So I'm going to go ahead and get some of these mounted in here. And you're going to have to kind of finesse this a little bit to make it work, putting these shims and all in there. Here, I'm going to do this side. I'm going to give you a close-up of how it actually assembles, and it'll be the same for the top, uh, that top middle bracket. But So how you want to do this, how I find I do it, it's easier, is you take your bolt and go ahead and put it in here. Be careful not to scratch your chrome from the other side. Like so. Take a shim, and it don't really matter which way you put it, but I like to take the flat side and put toward the bracket so the more rounded side will go toward the bolt it really doesn't matter which way you do it it's just my personal preference as a matter of fact you're better off to go ahead and put both bolts in at one time for this one like so and now you want to take your spring washer which is what this is because you see the way it's made when you tighten it down it's like a spring almost like a lock washer that goes on the bolt now see how it's made you want the higher side the raised side to go facing out so it would go just like this and then your lock nut you see how it's rounded on one side and flat on the other the rounded side goes out Then you just repeat the same process for all the other bolts same way so i'm gonna go ahead and get these uh, brackets put on here and then we'll move to the next step okay so uh real quick i wanted to let you guys in on something i figured out what's going on here so if you've seen i put one of these washers over here originally well so this they don't give you eight of these they only give you six so you only put them on the top bolt here and then the two side bolts see just like i got here same thing and then remember how I was telling you they only give you or they give you eight of these washers here. And these are the shims that go underneath the bracket here and on the sides, but they don't go underneath this bracket. Well, that's cause it goes on top. And then you use, you utilize all eight of those this way. And that gives a washer to clamp down to. And then you put your nut on there. And there's that. I figured that out cause at first I was confused why they didn't give you eight of these. And I had to go back in, take this back off of this bolt and go in and change the configuration on it. But that's how that's done. And so now we're good to go. We're gonna get it put on the car now. All right, and it is finished and it is looking good. Look at that shine on that thing. It's like a mirror. I love it. I absolutely love it. See, flip it around and there's the brackets. 
I them all bolted up the way they're supposed to. They look good. And I tell you, these bumpers are heavy. On these cars, they are heavy. Uh, I don't know if this one is quite as strong as the original per se. These cars came with bumper jacks, actually, which is really cool. And you can see right here where it's cut out for where the bumper jack's supposed to go. But I'll be honest with you, like, I'm not going to use it, obviously, because of what it is to me. But uh, I don't know that I'll, I don't know if I'd trust putting a bumper jack on the new ones just because I don't know if they're quite as strong as the original. But like I said, I'm not doing it anyway because I'm not going to scratch my chrome up. But uh, I love how it looks. And those bolts look really good. I put a coat of wax on here. And the quality of this bumper is really, really good. Uh, I've seen some small little things in it. Like, I don't know if it'll pick up on camera. If you get really, really close, like little hairline scratches. Uh, but you have to be right up on it. You know, and stuff like this. Like, I don't... Uh, if I rode really hard, I could probably get most of that out. And I'll probably try to polish it when I wash the car. But, but I mean, it's a really good unit. And it's really shiny. It looks really good and clean. Can't wait to get it on the car, see how it looks. All right, moment of truth. We're getting to install the bumper, and I did pick up some new bolts as well. In case uh, in case you're wondering, there are 3 8 16s. All right, so you may have to get a a buddy to help you like I had to. It just makes it easier. Now I can come here and tighten our four bolts up here, as well as don't forget those four bolts on the bottom till I go underneath the car and reach up in there and get those four as well. And then uh, once you make sure it's lined up properly, you have a little bit of wiggle room up and down on each side before you tighten them. Not so much side to side, it fits really good. See, I have about the same amount of gap. You look here. And it come to the pass or the driver's side and it's about the same so it fits really well side to side like it's supposed to and it uh the gap's about the same going across so it looks really good it fits good like i so said you got a little bit of wiggle room up and down to help align to get your gap right and uh even so it looks good stand back take a look at it and here's a look at it with the trunk closed really good idea the car is dirty so you know you got a nice shiny bumper on a dirty car but either way it looks really good and i'm happy with the way that turned out very very pleased with that here's a before and after all right guys well that's it we are done uh, it turned out really well i'm glad the way this turned out it's a good uh solid fit it fits like it's supposed to i couldn't be happier with it i really uh really like the product that amd put out uh, good chrome quality, good thick steel and bolts. Uh, the, uh, I mean, the brackets bolted up like they're supposed to. Bolted to the car. If it's good side to side, I'm happy with it. So, yeah, shout out to my buddy that helped me in the video. I appreciate that as well for him helping me out because I could do it by myself, but it's always easier when you have some help holding things and getting it in place. And uh, so shout out to him for that. And shout out to AMD, like I said, for uh, producing such a good quality product. And if y'all like the video, give me a thumbs up. I'd appreciate it. If you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them in the drop box down below, and I'll get back to you as always. And uh, thank y'all for watching each and every day. I can't tell you how much that means to me. Thank y'all. It means a lot. And, uh, yeah, I'll see y'all on the next one. So take care.